What's good, y'all? <clears throat> so yes, here we go once again with the Zen. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just the lighting here is obviously uh, <laughs> it's the illuminated one. This is a uh, Illuminati confirmed right here. <laughs> Uh, don't worry though, we're both in it, so I mean, it's, we kind of, we kind of run this shit, I mean, so yeah, the lighting is going to be, uh, there you go, yeah, <laughs> blinding at times, because whenever you're woke, it's just, you know, it's love and light, and, No, that's why you need the shade. Like, you get blinded by that light. You gotta, you gotta balance that shit. So yeah, and then uh, audio issues. I don't know if it's a connection with whenever he was doing the live stream or whenever. Sometimes, whenever you download stuff, it doesn't download right and it's choppy. So. But I've been noticing a lot of people's videos. There's a lot of weird connection issues going on lately with the interwebs. <laughs> on uh, a lot of different levels, micro and macro. A lot of uh, wonky and bizarre shit going on. And like I said in my previous one, uh, both polarities are being amped up. So, I mean, what's going to stick and, and be more lasting and prevalent is what people decide to engage with. Do you let the bullshit fall, fall away and pay attention to the good, engage the clarity, the heartfelt connections, or do you get caught up in the fucking drama, in the shit show? So I'm not going to play very much of this. There's a couple things that I kind of wanted to share some of my thoughts that came up. And whenever I do these, I, I don't ever know like, <laughs> what the fuck's going to happen. Or even if I'm going to put them up. I'm just, uh, I don't know, I'm doing it to see what may be, what may come to be. To see if the muse wants to come in and play the music for me and you. So, before I forget, <laughs> before I remember to forget, <laughs> uh, one thing I wanted to talk about was, uh, I don't know if, how many of y'all follow J. Chris on that guy's channel, but he's super big and caught up in uh, We're Not the Body, and uh, it's, it's to the extreme where, like, he, he pays no attention to the body. Because, according, you know, in, in his, uh, mindset and view, we're not the body, so that's not what's important. What's important is what's animating the body. And this is, this is the half-truth thing, and I mean, he's not doing it and saying it because he's... Well, I mean, who knows nowadays, but I don't feel his intentions are to misdirect people, even though uh, that's what is happening. So, uh, one of the things 
that was touched upon here is different levels of engagement, uh, being in bodied and then out of body, and I'm coming from a place where all all levels of engagement are, are very necessary and important so you can get a full spectrum view and vantage point to work from instead of just being on one side and seeing things from one vantage point. Being very in body embodied in the now in the present moment yes this is important but also it's you can get too caught up in that and you start to ignore things that are also there in that moment in that present now with you because really it's all nows that ever existed, that ever will exist, are right now. So you have access to all this. So it's where do you want to put your attention to in this moment? In the next moment? It's a choice. It's all a choice. It's not necessarily, you know, quote unquote, right or wrong. It's just. What do you choose to engage with? Probably the worst thing that you could do, I would say, is to discount the importance of the human form, the physical body. Because you're, you're just, you're missing the whole fucking purpose, your pure position of why you even have a fucking body in the first place. Why are you going to focus on what's animating the body and, and not the body whenever you have a fucking body? What, what's the purpose of having one then? And then also to take it to the level of going out of body and then having the astral travels and all the stuff that you can do quote unquote out of body how long do you think that shit's gonna last whenever you don't have a body and yes you you can spend as much quote unquote time as you want out of body having your own experiences but the mentality that you have agreed upon when it comes to how the body ages. And it all comes back down to your mentality of mind, your mentality of time, the mind of time. Do you mind your time? You can spend quite a long time out of body and and then come back in your body and look in the mirror and you will see a fucking corpse damn near this happens to people who are unexperienced and spend a long time in out of body experiences And once, once the physical body, you know, uh, we, we stop giving awareness and attention to it, then there goes your out of so, so called out of body experiences as well. You have to have both so that you can have engage one or the other. They're both necessary. If you put too much of an aspect and focus on one, 
you're negating the other and the other's dissolving. Unfortunately, we've kind of, most people haven't been taught and don't engage their subtle bodies and their etheric body, if you want to call it an astral body. So that lies dormant in, in most people because they don't engage it. They don't engage their dreams. They don't. They don't continue their curiosity. They don't continue the childlike mind state of exploring, of figuring things out for yourself, of just going into the experience just for the experience's sake. Because that's, that's where you truly learn. That's truly where the wisdom lies, is in that direct experience. That's where you learn. Not from uh, hearing about it, from, from another person experiencing it. You have to get in there and do it yourself. And it will teach you something uh, uniquely... Um, specific to you. That only you are going to... It's, it's going to be for you. Like, how you learn is, is unique for each individual. So, I mean, it's very important that, yes, we can all learn from each other, but we have to get in there and do it ourselves because there's going to be unique messages for each and every one of us. And it's, it's up to all of us to decipher that message. And if you get too caught up in, in, the, in the message and, and deciphering, oh, what does it mean, then you've already lost track. You, you've already uh, fallen off the path of being in that engagement and in that direct experience. It, it's, it's a flow. You have to be in the flow to learn from the flow. <laughs> the spice must flow. The spice of life. So yeah, and... Sure, like you can be out of body and not have a physical body, but you have to have some kind of an anchor point. Um, and we'll get into this in later videos because this deserves its own whole other uh, video to explain and go into more. But it's not quite like, it's more like magnetism than gravity. Uh, it, it, your body holds your sp spirit here. It keeps it in this place. And whenever you're disembodied, you, you kind of float away. Until something sparks your heart and you come back and you are born again. And you can do this while you're living. People do this all the time. It's resurrection, anastasis, recreating yourself. The body does this all the time. And that's one of the key... That's the major thing here is it's not waking up. It's getting clear. Wake up, yes. Wake up to what's going on all the fucking time that you have been unaware of. But don't don't force that. You know, everyone has their own process and style. <laughs> Sometimes it's very wild. And it's just it's unique for everyone. So I mean we can help each other and sometimes we do need a, a fucking kick in the butt. Sometimes we need some genies to light a fire under our asses so that we remind ourselves. Of where the truth is. Of what's most important. For for us. For the individual. In that moment. What's most important. Where does the focus need to be? Where do you want it to be? What is your choice? What do you choose? Are you clear? On your intent and your desire? What do you desire? What do you choose? Thank <laughs> you.
aren't we already aren't we already modifying our genes every day with everything we do? Just by thinking differently. Haven't haven't people told you? Haven't you seen these videos of these scientists? Even the ancient gurus and yogis all through the world say you change your mind, you change your DNA. If you change your DNA, you're restructuring your genetic code. Restructuring it to what? What was the original genetic code? All of the codons, all of the, was it, was it three strands DNA? How many you need? Have you ever seen some, have you ever seen DNA? <laughs> no, you haven't. Exactly. And this is like one of the major key things here and part of this process for a lot of us that are, I don't say waking up, coming to, uh, realizing what's going on within and so that we can see clearly without rewriting your own scripts realizing what you've been told have you experienced are you able to directly experience certain things have you do you know firsthand or are you just taking the word of someone that supposedly is supposed to know better than you even though they, they don't know how to, they don't know what true nutrition or health and wealth. They don't know anything about the subtle realms of their own beingness or how to access that. Yet you're going to take their word because they have the instruments and tools and they're learned educated <laughs> well who who really is the fool there then I mean we've all been you know led into this fucking bullshit game and everyone we're led into this indoctrination system and everyone's going along with it so I mean if you want to be the outcast and be seen as a crazy person potentially get put in a fucking loony bin or two Then you just go along with it. Your parents, your peers, your so-called friends, everyone else is believing in the lie. So if you choose not to, that's going to be a very lonely road to walk for a while. You have to, if you want to see what's really going on. You have to engage that singularity point to where it is going to feel like you're absolutely alone until you go all the way into that. You stop resisting the process and you go through it and you realize, boom, there's everything because everything is within that singularity you start to and like like Sen just said change your mind you, it's not it's not genetics as much as just the coding you change the coding and your per, it's perception you change your perception and Get cl you clear your, you get a clear uh, tune, you you atone and you tune your antenna. You start to pick up on the frequency, and you start to attract that frequency, those vibrations, the resonance, bioacoustic resonance. Do, oh, you, uh, how many codes are on that? Hey, put that in the computer. Hundred billion, zillion, this and that. Blah, blah, blah. You never seen it though, but we do know that at least there is underneath that that coding or whatever that all that shit is. There's whatever consciousness is that creates that. 
which is just whatever the fuck we are. Consciousness, awareness, other thing. And you can't... <laughs> it's like, all these people, wake up! These people that want an alarm clock for everybody, they want, wake up! You gotta, you gotta see all the shit that's going on. But fuck, I'm taking a nap. Leave the fuck alone. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are they going they gonna wake you up though? The woke folk. The woke folk is joke. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, yes, wouldn't it be nice if people started to become more aware of how shit really works, of what's really going on? But I mean, it's just like with religion or, or any kind of indoctrination. You can't shove shit down people's throat. You, you, can't, you can't force them to wake up. And oftentimes, because of our indoctrination, uh, whenever something is pushed towards at someone, they're, they're going to resist it. Even, no matter if it's truth or, or what the fuck ever. No one wants to get shit pushed down their throat. We, we had enough of that as kids, right? As young goat gods. That's for real. You see, does this make sense about the about these people? Eh. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and yes, we can we can be awake and aware and dissolve our preconceived notions of what certain words are, of just the original essence of, of things, of everything, of ourselves. Coming to understand through understanding all the little processes that are always going on. Starting to regain and reclaim control. And, and, and what that word even really means, what all words and, and thoughts where the original essence stems from the origin point because you can seek control but in so doing you, you lose it, it slips through your fingers because there is no fucking control there is just a flow and you either flow with it or you resist So this control takes the form of an awareness. An awareness of the process. Which, which isn't really a control of it, you're just, you're aware of the reasoning, the purpose. You're aware of the purpose of the process. That's really what control is. You just, you see how shit works, and then you're able to play with it a little bit. And potentially become a master manipulator and, and orchestrate whatever you want whenever everyone else is dumbed down. You trick enough people in the right positions. You have them think that they're on top. That they're the ones actually in control. And then it's fucking easy. And that's pretty much been the name of the game for a while now. But the, the very tippy top. Just like uh, on the dollar bill, the capstone is separated from the rest of the pyramid. That's that capstone is like likened to like the puppet master. That's not attached to the rest of the shit that they're manipulating. Even though they really are, because 
you know, there, there's really only one one of us here after all. But that's how the pyramid scheme works, is you have layers and layers of and degrees of manipulation. And lies within lies. You 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 trick the right people in the right places, and the rest just go along with it. If that makes sense, hopefully it does, because it's pretty fucking obvious once you once you get woke. <laughs> Yeah, but, so, yes, you, you can force yourself to not, have the body not go into sleep, you know, like most people are used to engaging it, falling asleep. But... Just because you can do something doesn't mean necessarily that it's going to be beneficial. But it's still an experience, and you still learn from it. So, go for it. <laughs> A lot of times, uh, we got to learn the hard way in order to learn the right way. But... Falling asleep, whenever you're still aware, you have the wakefulness still about you, then you engage what you used to call sleep in a new level, a new layer, to where you're able to witness what's going on. You're able to pull yourself out of the body a little bit. Allow the body to do to do what it needs. It needs to rest. That's why all these systems on Earth, the Earth itself has her cycles and her times of fruition and abundance and Her time of summer, and then her time where she needs to rest. And I'm not saying that if it's always like that, and I'm not saying it always has to be like that. But what I am saying is, nature has its... You could say code, uh, codings, uh, processes itself to where she's going to make sure that life continues on. Even whenever the beings that <laughs> this realm was created for have fallen asleep and forgot to pay attention then she's going to need to do, change it up a little bit with her cycles. But as the collective awareness shifts and uh, starts to become more awake, more aware of what's going on within themselves, then that's going to also reflect in the cycles, if you want to call it seasons. Everything has its purpose and up to you to decide what the purpose is, but also if you want to try to control it, 
manipulate it, or if you just want to flow with it. See it for what it is. Find the original essence, the origin point. Then you can really start to play and move beyond the things that you thought <laughs> were barriers or limitations. You can't force people to be conscious. If, if we could have, we'd have already done it. And we'd see and the fruits. The, the fruits of society is a bunch of people keeping you dead asleep. Keeping you asleep. That's just as bad as waking you up. So you got to wake up versus, hey, come on little sleepy heads. Yeah, there, there's a healthy balance. So mm -hmm. up here energized and taking a fucking nap. <laughs> Take a nap. Why do you think? Why you think dogs nap? Why you think cats nap? You ever seen animals? Just like I'm gonna take a nap. I'm like, hey, wait up. Went to a dream world. Dipped off. Did something. Exactly. There's there's <laughs> there's a lot more going on <laughs> than than uh, what what you've been led to believe. What most people choose to engage in. When most people are out here caught up in the rat race, they. Are, are just allowing the the subtle realms to basically influence them. That's the choice that they're making by not... Whenever you choose ignorance, the willful ignorance... You are choosing to encapsulate yourself. You are choosing to go along with the programs that you've been led to believe of right or wrong, real or fake, hallucination, death. Or you can spend, instead of money, spend a little time. Spend awareness. Recreate what you think time is. And start paying attention to what happens as you fall asleep, as you allow the body to relax down. Keeping the mind aware. Keeping a dream journal. Starting to recollect, recollect your dreams. Seeing what that does for you with Mem Ori. Seeing the things that you remember, that you have access to, whenever you start to engage your dreams, your subtle realms, your subtle bodies, your astral body. Oftentimes, I have people come up to me and either tell me, to wake up, or, well, <laughs> not, not in the sense that Zen was talking in, but in the sense of they, they think I'm either asleep, basically, because most people don't even really know what meditation is or what that looks like, so they'll just think I'm asleep, but I... <laughs> definitely the opposite of that is going on. So, yeah, this, I 
we've been led into a world where not only are we boxed in these just just the, the very essence of being in an apartment or a boxed building it's going to cut you off from just being able to open your eyes and see nature to see endless to see the skies and the stars and or the sun and just to see no boundaries just the very act of keeping people boxed in homes and houses and squares that in and of itself teaches people to box their own minds in to continue along that path encourages them to continue to cut themselves off from the truth which is that you cannot be cut off unless you trick yourself into thinking that you are so it's like a, it's like a false sense of being embodied like people are so caught up in either money or just gaining something or just being so caught up in their body and not even necessarily super aware of that they are in their body but just so engrossed in their just the limited senses that they are used to engaging that they forget about their other senses and their other modes of engagement and that's that's keeping people asleep but I mean by all means if you want to stay asleep stay asleep if you want to take a nap take a nap just it doesn't mean that you have to completely fall asleep, even though you <laughs> want to take a nap. You can still be aware whenever you do that. You can allow the body to do what it needs to do and rest, and recoup, regroup. And you can engage other realms, other subtle aspects of beingness. You can even pop out and go back in and, and take a look at what's going on within the subtleties inside of your physical body. The only limitation is the limitation you choose to believe. Shut, shut the program down. Here we go. Pick it up. No, wake up, wake up. <laughs> look at, look at. Look at the growth process of the universe. Look at the cycle of the sun. Sometimes it's out here, and sometimes it ain't. Circadian rhythms. All of this. It, it's the same as it's the same as consciousness. It's the same as like possibility. Even if you were in full on um, samadhi and God mode, even though you could have awareness of everything, you couldn't possibly instantaneously know all things where everything is at. You can only see so far. You got you got 360 degree vision and up and down and your smell every all the smells at once are heightened. That's in, why would you want that? It'd be too bright. See, it's too bright. You can't see. Can you see right, I think it's right here? No, you can't. It's too bright. So I have to come over here. If I sit here like this, you can't be part of me, can you? I'm glowing. I turn into that. I turn into that. I become infinite light. But then what? Exactly. And so, I mean, like I said at the beginning of this, if you want to focus on we're not the body, we're, you know, we're the consciousness, we're the light within the water, fine. But don't, don't forget about the purpose of the body.
This reminds me, I think I may have mentioned this in another video. Um, it may be a video that I have not put out yet. But uh, one of my one of my uh, close friends was in her glade. If you don't know what a glade is, figure it out. <laughs> no, but uh, at her at her home, at her residence, and. She came into contact with an essence, a uh, spherical uh, being, if you want to call it that, and I've had similar experiences as well. Uh, yeah, so I mean... This story uh, sparked a lot of memories for me, big time, because uh, of the spherical being mentioned, as well as what happened to her, which I have experienced that too. And uh, it, it's it's very much like if you take some kind of uh, entheogen or plant spirit medicine and... Uh, you're kind of able to see in the dark, so to speak, uh, the light within all atoms uh, is illuminated. Uh, all molecule molecules. So everything is, is lit up. And, and it's and it's awesome to experience, but but not always to experience it. You don't always want to be in that in that place because otherwise you lose sight of balance. You, you lose sight of the point of the pure position. So, the story is that this spherical being came to <laughs> this magical feminine being and lit her up it lit her up, it lit her glade up in um, all spectrums. So it made everything like uh, a super illuminated uh, rainbow. And, and yes, of course, it looked like something out of like a fantasy or, or you know, a fairy tale, right? Very magical and mystical. Utilizing the light and the mist, accentuating the colors, all the hues. It's like turning the dial up so that everything becomes very bright and heightened. But in so doing, and instead of, you know, ooing and awing, this person simply asked, she simply stated, thank you for being, you know, who and what you are, but please turn it back to the way it was. And please don't ever do that again. Perfection isn't in within just the love and the light. Perfection includes all aspects harmonized. You can't push one to the side. You can't choose one over the other. You have to see how they all fit together, how they all work together. And if they don't, you have to find the harmony. And oftentimes, we just have to allow the harmony to present itself to us. Oftentimes, people get in their own goddamn way too much. You just have to take a step back. Allow, allow life to present itself to you. The answers will come to you if you let them. If you need an answer.
you then condense it into physical form so you can have an experience, which is akin to what? Shadow realm, the shadow that created the earth matrix, the mother, the earth based system. I mean, you can't always be physical sleeping in darkness and but you can't always be this that you can't see because it's too bright. Yep. Pretty much. And then also, you know, like like I how I like to present stuff is it's this and it's that. It's not either or, it's yes, but and there there is more. Don't don't cut yourself off from from potential. From potentially remembering who you are, who we all are. Because really, we we're all always in the body we're always not in the body we just we, we just forgot <laughs> we forgot that we had a choice we forgot the choice that we made we forgot and so we keep repeating the same mistakes and I'm not going to say what the mistakes are it's for each and every individual to figure it out for themselves. To, to allow life to speak to them in its own unique way. To decipher their own unique message that's for them. In a specific manner to where they will understand a certain something. A unique something. Okay, let's see if there's much left here. <laughs> Get that full bright scholarship, you know? <laughs> no, that's about it. So yeah, uh just spreading this uh I'm spreading the light and love. <laughs> I'm spreading the Zen love. Uh just giving commentary on this and just sharing it with, with people if you haven't already seen this or thought about these things maybe you can spend a little time inside your mind inside the mind and contemplate allow yourself time for contemplation non-rushed contemplation a smooth flow back into the center, back into the heart, back into homeostasis and the monad of the eye of the hurricane, the, the epicenter, the origin point. Allow yourself to just be there and exist there and just feel it. Yeah, it may sound new agey and shit, but I mean, it's just Start there. Start with a simple engagement and allow life to happen. Allow things to come to you. Allow the resonance. To happen. And slowly but surely, you will start to become and remember what it was like to be a child. That sense of wonder, the sense of awe, being inspired constantly. And I'm more talking about 
potentially being a child, being out in nature, or just engaging with other children, engaging with, uh, if you want to call it God, the creator, uh, the spirit, that's, that's where my most profound childhood memories are, is just being out in nature and engaging with spirit, engaging with the wind, engaging with uh, the things I didn't know were real at the time. And especially if you, you know, go to an adult, adult, who, who will tell you, you know, oh, it's just your imagination. Need to get that kid on medicine. Need to get him on uh, Ritalin. He has ADHD. Get him on Adderall. That's some sick fucking shit. And that's... It's part of it, man. Part of the system that we're in. To ignore the root causalities and just throw the easy way at them. To throw the medicine, what they call medicine, which is just, you know, the pharmaceuticals. Get people addicted to that. Addictions within addictions within addictions in this diction of bullshit scripts and conscripts and twisted linguistics. One of the things that is mentioned whenever one really meditates, and when I say meditate, I mean, you know, <clears throat> to still the mind, to allow and feel what is going on naturally without you having to do anything. It is said that you relax the DNA if that's even really a thing. Um, potentially unwinding it even and accessing the cellular memory, the genetic memory. Relax your body, relax your mind, allow the essence of what you are to speak to you. Allow spirit to speak to you. Clean out, clear up, and you'll hear it. Cleanse the lens, reattune. And you'll start to feel all of our hearts, and you start to hear the deeper meaning. You'll start to answer your own questions before they even arise. And that's when you know you're woke. <laughs> Peace.